hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel today i wanted to take part in the brilliant tag that's going around at the moment started by amidst the gray and that's the tag coffee house sticks now i am a deck fan and i'm also a coffee fan i i love coffee and so of course my ears pricked up the two words in the same tag so coffee house decks what decks correspond to different coffees we're going to start with prompt number one which is the espresso shot a deck that's strong punchy and gets straight to the point so in january i've been working with this oracle the dark mirror oracle by laura Sava. now this is definitely one of those decks that's strong and punchy and gets straight to the point i mean look at these key words revenge and parasite today for tomorrow anger and chains they're the type of keywords that we see in in very few decks this was my card for january colorless angel february card is the child i was meant to be the temple of my body or sacrifice queen of my world gilded regret i mean these really are key phrases that you really don't see in other oracle decks so it definitely is an espresso shot more than more than any deck that i think i've ever worked with it demands you face up to you know some pretty big things it definitely it definitely picks at core wounds which is that espresso shot idea of getting straight to the point we're not we're not skirting around any issues here. We're going straight in to the core wound. Addicted, naked before the stars, fated to suffer. You can see what I mean. It is definitely an uh, in incredible mass market deck, really. It doesn't have many cards. That's its only downside. Not that I'm trying to sell you the deck here or anything. But if you are interested, it's mass market, but it doesn't doesn't have that many cards. But honestly, I think it's one of those decks where one card a month is enough to work with. So that is my Espresso Shop deck, the Dark Mirror Oracle, which I think in January this year has brought about probably some of my biggest magic moments during tarot okay prompt number two is the drip a deck that's simple accessible and gets the job done so this is a deck that i regret not working with sooner even though its images were in my learn tarot book and it's the rider weight my yellow box rider weight this is the box or the deck that's um turned me from saying i just use the rider weight deck to study with and it changed that sentence to i actually read with the rider weight and i do wish that i'd have started actually reading with this deck earlier than i did um because it is a drip it's the deck that's accessible and simple why is it simple i think um it's because every other deck that i use i hold that double image in my head i say if i pull the four of wands i from another deck i will be looking at that image but this image is also held in my head at the same time if i pull the ace of wands i see this hand coming out of the cloud in my head with the the other card layered upon it so it it drips over every other deck that i use and uh, it, it there is just something about that i mean why why would why would it be this deck that drip feeds when it wasn't a deck that i used wasn't a deck that I used for absolutely ages. I suppose it's the original, isn't it? It's uh, uh, the original Rider Weight deck. So anyway, it gets the job done. It's 
there's no double step with this i don't have to think okay what does the rider weight card look like how does this apply to this card there's no double step we're just right there with that image in front so i do find it really easy to read with because of that there's no double step am i making sense and therefore it's really accessible and it really gets the job done so that's my drip deck okay prompt number three is the pour over this is a deck that you need to take your time with but it's totally worth the effort and for me i have chosen the deck that's in here which is the mystical dream tarot this deck it does go its own way on a lot of the cards um, it has a very recognizable color palette um, so it, it, it does limit the colour palette to these sort of smoky blues and rusts and sort of olivey greens. Uh, it, it's, so it's got its own look, but it's also got its own feel. And like I said, it goes its own way at times. So I am still using this with the guidebook in hand. It's not one of those yet that I am just reading as is because the guidebook offers so much extra depth to the reading and I'm finding that um, it's depth that always resonates with the truth of the reading so that's why I think it's totally worth spending your time with this deck with the guidebook in hand and really delving into some of the cues in the guidebook because the readings i've done with this i don't think i've done one reading with this deck that i wouldn't say is profound in some way and has made me sit up and go oh my goodness you're joking you know when you get readings like that that just make you sit up and think i cannot believe either the imagery or the message in the guidebook or the way it took you like away from where you thought the cards were heading with their normal meanings and it threw something in that was just so profound and helpful the backs are like this can you see that there we go um yeah and it's i love it i love the color palette i love the imagery i love the guidebook it really is worth like letting go of what you expect from a tarot deck and kind of working with this as is and um, yeah i just think it's brilliant so that's my pour over deck the mystical dream tower number four is the cafe latte a deck that's well received and highly palatable so it has to be the light seers tarot although it could have been the rider weight as as well because i think a lot of people love the rider weight but i think that this deck is I think it's loved as it is for very good reason it, it is because the meanings of the cards are just held so well within the imagery and the imagery is beautiful and the color choices are beautiful and the um the, the artwork is beautiful it is just a really lovely modern tarot deck to use that makes reading tarot easier i think it doesn't push you into new places like the last deck i i showed you pushes you but having said that the artwork is is sublime i mean look at the meanings here that's so clearly the energy of the hermit there the nine of wands and holding a boundary it's so clearly expressed here in this image and the seven of swords with somebody sneaking away and all the crows making a real fuss about it it's just so beautifully clear what the cards mean I also absolutely love that you've got older people represented in some of these cards as well. I love the crows in it and I just think that for ease of use it's there, for beauty it's there, the colour palette is there to please a lot of people. 
it's just definitely a cafe latte isn't it in fact you could imagine a lot of these characters in this deck enjoying a good cafe latte in the funkiest most popular coffee house in town discussing spiritual matters and the latest yoga workshop you can just see it now but i love this deck i um often come to it if i just want something to be easy and clear and it always delivers it's a cafe latte prompt number five is the cappuccino a deck that's classic sophisticated and maybe a bit fussy and for me it's the deck that's in here which is the glorious mystery of the black madonna so this i think is really like a classically beautiful sophisticated deck i think the imagery is just gorgeous but it's very detailed it's very fussy the guidebook as well it really delves into the story behind the madonnas and you know it takes time to pull the meaning of the spread you've pulled out of these cards so i suppose it could be classed as a bit fussy it's not so readily available that deep meaning in the spread if you're going beyond just the simple tarot card meaning but it's so beautiful and what i want to do i want to show you it with this one the oracle of shadows and light which is a lucy cavendish and a jasmine beckett griffith deck because over the christmas period i used these two decks together and honestly they blew me away they were so lovely working with them together and i think it kind of made this deck it pulled this deck into the more sort of sacred and it made this deck slightly easier to fathom the meaning from it made it less fussy as it were um, and it, they weren't really a combination that I would automatically have put together um, it was just searching out new winter deck combinations that I just stumbled across these two and just immediately fell in love with them and they they proved in use to be stunning together so i wanted to include them both for this prompt for my cappuccino there's two really stunning decks put together prompt number six well now is the mocha a deck that's rich indulgent and a bit extra so for this i thought of any marseille deck really because i do find them a bit extra it's extra difficult because i haven't got a clue but the one that i had to pick for rich and indulgent and a bit extra is the mythical creatures tarot now in january i began a study of marseille which i only managed two days of because i've been, just been swamped with other studies and other projects and life and single mom in but so far the two cards that i've studied guys have blown me away with this deck and it is a bit extra because for each for each card it gives you the meaning of the mythical creature it gives you the rws meaning and it gives you the tarot de marseille meaning along with specific mythical creatures meanings as well so there is extra in there you've got it compared to ride away you've got the tarot de marseille meaning and you've got the the mythical creature meaning as well there's that extra layer so it's extra and look at these images it's definitely indulgent and gorgeous um, and just so rich as soon as i saw this prompt rich and indulgent and extra oh my gosh it had to be the mythical creatures tarot so i am wanting to learn marseille this year 
but I've also been doing the 365 yellow bricks which is daily tarot I've also been with a group of wonderful friends studying the I Ching which I keep falling behind with because of life and, and on top of that with the Marseille study as well which is also happening with a group of friends I um, I feel like I'm a bit bottom of the class with it all but I am throwing self-love over it all and just doing what I can um, I've had a week where I haven't done anything you know when you've got too much on so you end up doing nothing that's me that was me at the end of January so a new month now it's time to just step back in as and when I can but this deck is beautiful I am loving it and uh, it's extra it's fancy it's decadent it's rich and it's my perfect mocha deck. Number seven is the Cortado. I don't know what type of coffee that is, but um, I know Lisa, at Lisa Pepez, described some of the coffees, but I've totally forgotten what she said this one was. But the Cortado is a deck that's balanced and objective. And I wanted to, for this prompt, for the Cortado, share this one the rainbow moon tarot by samantha west uh, this is a deck that i used all through december on my doll channel tiny soul whispers because i did daily readings through december with charm casting from a barbie charm advent calendar and we pulled card pulls from this deck every single day and i fell in love with it guys it was just so it was so objective and it gave me different options to talk about but it was really clear as well and uh, because they were general readings for everybody along with doll divination and a tiny soul whisper as well as with the charms it was just nice to have to have something that really well balanced not too not too in depth because there was a lot going on with a doll being used and a charm being used as well like if i'd have tried to have done that with the mysteries of the black madonna i think i'd have got myself in a tizzy but with this deck it was it was beautiful to use and it was very clear very balanced and very objective and i absolutely love it i love the diversity of the figures and the rainbow hair i have a real thing for rainbow hair which i am missing terribly after years of being rainbow haired and now trying to grow out my gray and realizing i haven't really got so much gray this deck makes me want to go more colorful again um but apart from hairdressing and hairstyling tips yeah it is it's objective it's fantastic i love it i love samantha west's decks it was a real surprise love to develop at the end of 2022 so that is my cortado deck prompt number eight is the campana a deck that puts you in your place but with a hint of sweetness and for me, I wanted to share the Inner Child cards, a fairy tale tarot, which is by Isha Lerner and Mark Lerner. Um, this does have a, a kick with it within its fairy tale images. Um, and it can, it has and can put me in my place. These are huge cards. Let's move these stones up, otherwise we're never going to fit this in. So you can see it looks very sweet, very childlike. It does take you back to a time of fairy tale and story and fairies and mermaids. It's everything that an inner child might squeal and delight at. You've got stories like Rapunzel and Alice in Wonderland and Hansel and Gretel definitely serve serving up its message with a hint of sweetness however it does give you a kick in the pants whilst serving a sugary taste of 
stories of old. I have always, almost always, paired this deck unbelievably with the Thoth. And um, I know, it, again, <laughs> it seems like an odd pairing. But trust me on this, these two <laughs> really, really have magic together. Um, the Thoth, I, I, I've I, never heard of the voice of a deck so clearly as when I first thought, I wonder, I wonder what might happen. I mean, look at, look at this imagery immediately. Every time I do this with these decks, look at all of those maypole strings and then these swords here. Every time I put these decks together, it really blows my mind but anyway i was saying when i first thought i wonder what would happen if i put these decks together the thoth kicked up the biggest stink saying don't you dare and i just laughed so hard and i thought All right that's it i am gonna have to try now look at that fence there with this here um and when I put them together, the Thoth immediately piped down as if to say, oh, okay, this is good. I think it found a let's kick you in the butt bedfellow. <laughs> so when I saw this prompt for a deck that puts you in your place with a hint of sweetness, I just, I actually just thought about this pairing, but particularly this deck for the prompt. So that is my Campana deck. The Inner Child cards of Fairy Tale Tarot paired with the Thoth for an extra kick. Okay, prompt number nine is the Chai Latte, a deck that's warm, cozy, and nurturing. Now, I was really tempted to pull the Gentle Tarot for this because that fits this prompt brilliantly but in the end i decided to go for a mass market deck the witch's wisdom tarot this is by phyllis curat and artwork by Dan danielle barlow i do come to this deck for that feeling of groundedness for earth earth magic and for me groundedness and earth magic it does feel warm and cozy it definitely does feel nurturing it feels nurturing for me like nature is nurturing like my garden is nurturing like sinking my hands into the soil is nurturing or taking my shoes and socks off and walking on warm grass on a summer's day feels nurturing it has that feel and it speaks to a void within me that is all, always needing to be topped up um, and this deck does do it and I do reach for this deck more and more um, especially as I've got to know it more I, I used it a lot last year and realize the space that it fills for me not only in my tarot practice but in my emotional and spiritual being it, it fills a void um a void that grounds me it, i often think when i'm most dysregulated i feel like i'm floating away and this deck is like the string on the balloon snagged on your favorite tree saying no come back down to earth um, I love it. I love the reverse order. I love the pilgrim walking through nature, ending up on the earth, sol solidly grounded. And I suppose, if you think about it, the or the reversed order is all about that bringing the balloon back to earth, catching the string, and bringing it bit back down. That's the whole the whole ethos really behind the reversed order so it does it does follow that this is a cozy nurturing deck for me and i just love it so prompt number 10 is the matcha latte a deck that's an acquired taste 
or is a bit unconventional. So for this, I'm going with another favorite, the Botanica. This was created by Kevin J. Stanton, published by Beehive Books. A tarot deck about the language of flowers. And for me, that's what makes this really an acquired taste. Because if you're not into flowers or gardening or working with plants, then this might not be a deck for you, really. But I... I love it and you know the language of flowers and gardening and plants is something that as a gardener it holds my heart but if you were seduced by this gold gilding and the gold edges and the beautiful artwork in this deck it might be an acquired taste if you're not really interested in finding out about flowers because the imagery of the flowers does hold a lot of the meaning of the cards so you do end up when you use this deck finding out about meanings behind flowers also it is slightly unusual because it comes with these different symbols so it's not got the it's not got the card titles on so that's a little bit unconventional um, and delving into the the language of flowers and the meanings behind flowers and the witchcraft of flowers it's not for everybody so it's unusual that deck does this it puts the whole tarot meaning into the flower itself and it's an unusual setup for the cards as well but i love it i think that this deck is stunning um, my copy came slightly scratched, which I've mentioned before, but I got it at a huge discount because of that. You can see some of the scratching there on that card. But it's wonderful. If you are a gardener, if you love flowers, if you're interested in working with plants on your spiritual journey and you, you love tarot, then this is a must. There's my devil card, which is the most scratched of all but I bonded so much with this deck I didn't want to send it back and get a new copy because I just fell in love with this this version so that's the Botanica Tarot it's definitely an acquired taste it's a little bit unconventional so it's my matcha latte prompt number 11 is the hot chocolate a deck that speaks to a younger version of yourself well my younger version of myself is still very much around so it it still resonates just as strongly with my adult self but in here in this bag is the star tarot which i've been working with during my I Ching study as well. This is the tarot deck I've been using to pull tarot around I Ching cards. And well, I mean, look, look at the color palette. Look at the baby bears. Look at the lady in the beautiful cloak. Look at the wolf looking over mountains. I mean, it's, it's just storybook. It's the imagery is a delight. I mean, oh, six of cups two children riding a rainbow unicorn jumping over the sun in a starry sky with flowers underneath I mean if that doesn't speak to a younger version of yourself or to your current self if you like you're like me then I don't know what would and I think all of these cards I mean look death with a beautiful phoenix it's just wonderful all of these cards, I think, have that element that would just delight a child. It's one of the most beautiful decks, I think, on the market. Look at that Hierophant. Look how beautiful that imagery is. It also has a kick-ass guidebook. Oh my gosh, the guidebook for it is amazing. And it's it's thothy it's it's thoth elements to it love this eight of cups the eight of cups you're not just walking away you're swimming away with a dolphin to this fantasy island I mean, it's just 
wonderful. So it is thothy, it has thoth elements to it and you know the guidebook it's well worth holding the guidebook close and really getting to know the deck but any ounce of work you put into a deck with imagery this beautiful look at that queen of pentacles is worth it and i can feel every time I, every time i flick through this deck i can feel my inner children the whole tribe of them at every single age i've ever been leaping up and down squealing with joy at the imagery i mean look at the princess of cups <gasps> look at that cloak oh my gosh can somebody make me that cloak please and the ten of cups look, happy families but with dear oh love it and the empress as a butterfly i mean look at that so the star tarot oh my gosh i just get lost in this deck every time i pull it out of its bag and it's a brilliant reader it's wonderful and this card on the day that i pulled earth over water as my i ching card i pulled this card as a tarot clarifier earth over water yeah you can't even make this stuff up so the star tarot absolutely perfect for a hot chocolate number 12 is the italian soda a deck that's fun low-key and not overly serious so i could have chosen some of tilly's oracles downstairs because a lot of those sort of kiddie oracles are quite fun and the message is very affirmation style um i struggled to be honest this made me this prompt this prompt made me feel like a bit of a bore like i take everything too serious because i thought oh i don't know apart from tilly's decks whether i've got anything because my tarot practice does get serious and it did make me wonder whether i needed to lighten up a bit you know and have a bit of fun so i'm going to share a deck that i haven't used yet but i bought at the start of the year because i wanted some decks for my doll room which were a bit more fun oh my gosh and this is the kawaii tarot now i'm not saying that this deck isn't going to be able to give serious deep readings because of course any any tarot deck can do that but the imagery in this deck I, I literally bought it because it made me squeal and it's just so fun these are the backs so like i say i haven't i haven't actually used this deck yet i haven't even done a flip through but look i mean this just reminds me so much of the moomins and look oh oh my gosh look at that empress a poodle and a big stout fatter dog as the emperor i mean you've got these chubby unicorns leaping over rainbows and bunnies oh my gosh love it and the chariot card i mean who doesn't want a frog riding a leaf being pulled by a butterfly for their chariot card and strength a violin playing mouse standing on top of a cat's head it, it, it's this delights my soul and i'm sure it can deliver really deep readings but you're going to have to get past the imagery first that delights and 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 just makes you want to squeal and dance oh my gosh look at it <gasps> look at it oh my gosh am i speaking too loud in my microphone but this for me it's it's fun it's it's low key in the fact that it doesn't it's not like the dark mirror let's face it it's not the dark mirror oracle and it it's divine oh my gosh my gosh my my soul is literally about to burst with joy <laughs> look at that seven of wands i love it a panda on lollipops it just every card every single card is just like oh my goodness me so it has to be the italian soda 
the kawaii tarot so prompt number 13 the last prompt asks us to take things down a notch but on the herbal tea and after the excitement of the kawaii tarot i think we do need to calm it down let's have a herbal tea together this is a deck that takes things down a notch or helps you to unwind so for this i picked a deck that often lives next to my bed because i tend to pull cards from this deck at night now this is inner Segal's mystical healing reading cards it's interesting isn't it that the deck that wound me up in excitement was all those bright colors and yet the unwinding deck again is this sort of earthy tea stain brown rusty color stained with herbal tea perhaps seen as this is our herbal tea deck but the colour palette, I think, just does unwind me at night. Just gives me things to think about as I get into bed. And it, it, it's it's lovely. It's a lovely deck to, to read with and to use for journal prompts. Um, this card came up in a friend's reading that was proved to be so accurate. And I use the imagery in the card to help her decide about her job direction and the the hit i got from this imagery i told her what job i thought she should be looking for and she said like she hadn't considered that at all and it was exactly the job she ended up getting so there you go it's a powerful little deck this one um but i do find it very soothing it helps to unwind me i think the color palette is part of that and and the messages and just the gentle call to action that this deck brings so for that reason it's my much needed herbal tea after the excitement of that italian soda so that's it guys those are my 13 decks for coffee house decks a vr to amidst the gray now i'll put all of amidst the grays links and the original video down below in the description box i'll try and list all the decks as well i hope you enjoyed that guys and thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye